briefing, and I now give the floor to the representative of Afghanistan. Thanks. Mr. President, let me begin by first congratulating you on uh, taking the presidency of the Security Council for the month of June. Thank you for holding today's debate on Afghanistan. I welcome the presence of my good friend, Special Representative Kubish among us here today. We thank you for uh, your comprehensive briefing and steadfast support for Afghanistan. Afghanistan is at a critical juncture. As foreign forces prepare to withdraw next year, Afghan national forces are assuming full responsibility for the security and defense of their country. Two days ago in Kabul, a milestone was reached, the official launch of the fifth and final stage of security transition. This is a remarkable achievement, a source of pride for the Afghan people. Our security forces are handling complex security situations with increased confidence and fortitude. We stand ready to consolidate our gains, stand our feet, defend ourselves, and secure lasting peace. Mr. President, transition in its uh, entirety aims to bring ending, enduring peace and stability to Afghanistan. To ensure the security and defense of our country, it is essential to bring all Afghans together through a national dialogue and a spread of national unity to achieve a political solution that is embraced by all. Over recent months, Afghanistan has been extensively involved with various stakeholders, the United States of America in particular, to start direct negotiations with the Taliban as part of the peace process. In that regard, an agreement was reached with the United States on the opening of a Taliban office in Doha, Qatar, and their assurances that uh, peace talks would be conducted in accordance with a following concrete set of principles. The sole purpose of uh, the office would be to serve as a venue for direct negotiations between the Taliban and the High Peace Council. The office would not serve as an official representation of the Taliban in the form of a government, embassy, emirate, sovereign. The office would not engage in or support any activity related to terrorism and acts of violence inconsistent with uh, international law and consistent with uh, provis provisions of UN Security Council Resolutions 1988-2082. Yet uh, just two days ago, on the 18th of June, in a rather theatrical sequence of events, the Taliban office was integrated in a manner that contradicted the very principles to which I just referred. Furthermore, the public statement by the Taliban representatives in Doha not only lacked any clear commitment to peace talks with the Afghan uh, High Peace Council, the sole body mandated uh, to con conduct peace talks, but made an explicit reference to the continuation of violence. Again, it goes against uh, the very spread of peace. Given the concerns that have arisen, emanating from the obvious contradictions pertaining to our peace process, the government of Afghanistan decided, firstly, that the High Peace Council would not engage in peace talks under the circumstances the Taliban was, office was opened. And secondly, to suspend negotiations on the bilateral security agreement with the United States. Afghanistan naturally expects its uh, international partners to stand against any threat to the independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of Afghanistan. In fact, all of Afghanistan's partnership agreements are made in light of Afghanistan's national interests and aimed at promoting the country's peace, security, and stability. Mr. President, while Afghanistan is uh, committed to a peace uh, process and reconciliation that ensures a permanent end to the conflict, pursuing a process that will undermine the hard-won gains of the past 12 years, our constitution, the rights of all citizens, particularly women, and our domestic order 
will by no means be acceptable to the Afghan people. Afghanistan does not recognize such a thing as the Emirate of the Taliban. Raising the Taliban flag on Tuesday in Doha was just a reminder of a dark and bloody past from which our country still struggles emerge. The Islamic Republic of Afghanistan is the sole sovereign and legitimate authority chosen by Afghan people and recognized and supported by the international community. Further, Afghanistan's ownership of the peace and reconciliation process is indispensable, and it will not be compromised. Any successful outcome to reconciliation process requires uh, preserving the Afghan-led and Afghan-managed character of negotiations. This is an issue that has been recognized and endorsed both in Afghanistan and by the international community as well as a whole, including this distinguished council. Mr. President, taking this opportunity, I wish to also make clear to the international community, all member states and international and regional organizations that the Taliban office was established for one clear objective, peace talks that strictly observes agreed principles, as mentioned. Any other activity or function undertaken by, by or with the Taliban office outside the Afghan lit peace talks purposes is unacceptable. Mr. President, the continuing campaign of fear and terror, violence and brutality endanger the prospect of a peace process. Recent weeks have, been, have seen an uh, escalation in acts of violence affecting all citizens, men, women, and children, as well as international personnel. We condemn all heinous acts of terror, including the recent attacks on the IOM, ICRC, Kabul Airport, and the Supreme Court. Children are increasingly bearing the brand of the conflict. Last month in Kandahar, terrorists beheaded two children as they were scrapping for food uh, next to a local police checkpoint to take home to their families. Days earlier, in Paktiko province, children died in a suicide bombing near their school. We also note with regret continued civilian casualties caused by counterterrorism operations. The loss of one innocent life is one too many. We condemn all incidents of civilian casualties and call for their immediate end. Mr. President, despite all the challenges we face, Afghanistan is confidently advancing towards uh, another milestone. Next year's presidential election and provincial, uh, pro provincial council's elections. President Karzai has embarked on a broad consultative process with relevant stakeholders, including civil society and political parties, with a clear aim to have the polls take place in a spread of national unity and with consensus on core election electoral issues. Afghans see successful elections as a new and important benchmark for progress, which will allow the country to embrace the needs of the post-2014 transformation decade. Preparation for the polls are well underway with voter registration and security preparations already started. The electoral law and the draft IEC uh, independent election commission law were adopted by the lower house of the parliament and are now under consideration by the upper house. We welcome the readiness of the United Nations and other partners to support Afghan-led elections. And we are confident that the elections will unify Afghans around a common objective. Mr. President, Afghanistan has always seen regional cooperation as an important pillar of stability and prosperity in our part of the world. A new regional order is emerging increasing the prospects for a more peaceful and stable region. The Istanbul process has become a catalyst for result-oriented cooperation in our wider region. We are encouraged by the strong commitment shown by all regional and international partners to this historic initiative. This was further exemplified by the third uh, ministerial meeting of Heart of Asia countries this past April in Almaty. We also thank the government of uh, China for its generosity in hosting the next ministerial meeting of the process next year. Afghanistan is committed to expanding relations with all our neighbors. We applaud our brothers and sisters in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and Islamic Republic of Iran for their recent successful elections. The government of Afghanistan looks forward to working with the new 
uh, government in leadership of Pakistan in hopes that uh, Pakistan will sincerely support peace and stability in our country. Afghanistan desires friendly relations with Pakistan, characterized by mutual respect and observing each other's national sovereignty. This is crucial to stability in Afghanistan and to prosperity and cooperation in the region. Without any doubt, Mr. President, terrorism continues a serious threat to Afghanistan's peace and stability and that of the region. The people of Afghanistan are still the main victim of this heinous continuous terrorist campaign. The fact remains, so long as terrorist sanctuaries continue to exist in Pakistan's soil and some elements continue to use terrorism as an instrument of foreign policy, peace will not prevail neither in Afghanistan nor in the region. We also are very concerned with ongoing border shelling. This constitutes a serious, serious threat to Afghan sovereignty and the prospect of friendly relations between the two countries. We should not forget Afghanistan and Pakistan, as two brotherly countries, have a shared stake in a successful fight against terrorism and the prospect of peace and stability in Afghanistan and our region. Mr. President, we in Afghanistan know the long-term uh, peace and prosperity is interlinked with development, good governance, and human rights. The Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework forms the basis for a revitalized partnership between Afghanistan and our international partners. Addressing these key issues, aid coherence and partnership with the international community is critical to our sustainable development. Mutual commitment made in Tokyo will be solidified during the transformation decade. We look forward in this regard to the July 3rd senior official meeting in Kabul. By the same token, empowerment of women as uh, uh, proactive members of the Afghan society as parliamentarians, a peace, as peace builders, as government officials, and as the most vibrant members of the civil societies among our proudest achievements. While obstacles remain to fully realize this goal, we are working to protect and promote the human rights of all Afghans, women in particular. Afghanistan condemns, in the strongest term, all incidents of violence against women. The fight against impunity is central to our human rights efforts. This is evidenced by the prosecutions of an increasing number of uh, perpetrators in various parts of the country. Mr. President, this moment marks an important page in Afghanistan's history. The security transition and the upcoming elections will mark major achievements for the future of our country. These achievements are the result of the vigilant efforts that we have made over the past 12 years. We have come this far together on a joint journey, founded on a shared commitment to the, to, a better, to the betterment of our country and for the benefit of current and future generations. Our mission is unfinished, but uh, well on its way. Afghanistan has become a long way to even consider falling short of our fulfilling uh, the goals we set in 2001. We have been and we remain steadfastly committed to building a peaceful, stable, prosperous and democratic Afghanistan. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Afghanistan for his statement and I now give the floor to members of the Security Council. I give the floor to the representative of